All right, first, I want to thank Eric Weaver and ETC, as well as HPP by Z. Let's go ahead and give them a round of applause. Absolutely. Uh, so my talk today is about virtual production without Unreal Engine. And I'm the first to admit that's kind of a clickbait title. Uh, but the Unreal Engine, I think I should start by saying I'm not against Unreal Engine. I'm not saying we should not be using Unreal Engine. We use Unreal Engine for virtual production. We also use it for offline rendering for some projects. Like many people, we have a love-hate relationship. There's been times where Unreal has saved me. There's been times when Unreal did the opposite of save me uh, and for the PG crowd. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to talk a little bit about background plates, photogrammetry. Um, I'm also, if you swing by the B&H booth, uh, I helped set up the whole virtual production studio that, that's there. And we're doing a lot with image-based lighting, and we're doing a lot with a, sim a software called Assimilate Live Effects. And I'll be talking a lot about Assimilate Live Effects. It's, a, it's one of our partner companies. We've partnered with them, and I've become their brand ambassador as well. I discovered the, the software, it seems like before anyone did, and I saw the potential. And uh, it's, it's a very powerful program that allows a, very, a lot of different workflows, including Unreal, but also it's really good with other things. So we'll be talking a lot about that here as, in a little bit. Let's go ahead and go to the next slide. So my company is called LightSail VR, and we do a lot of different things. We are most known for our high-end 360 video and 180 degree video. Our founder, one of the founders is here, Matt Celia. He's capturing in stereo 180, as one does. Um, and we, we shoot a lot of stuff for Meta. We, we either indirectly or directly, a lot of times people will come to Meta and say, we want to shoot high-end 360, and they'll recommend that they come to us. And they've been a really great partner for us. Um, you can go check out our website, lightsailvr.com and you can find a lot more about our work, and you can see all the things we're getting into. Um, we do a lot of virtual production. I'm going to be talking about that in a little bit. And we have some great uh, partners like Silverdraft and uh, InCam and Simulate Live Effects. And then we also have a lot of tools. So a lot of times what happens is Matt or myself will run into a problem, and we create a tool that solves our problem. And then a lot of times we end up taking those tools. Some of them we give away. Some of them we put on sale. Um, we have our first, uh, our first plug-in available on the Epic Marketplace now. It's called HDRI+. Plus. Um, we can go ahead and play the, the next video. Uh, the next one, sorry. So HDRI+, Plus is a, a plug-in that we created. So it's a, it's a collection of over 20 HDRIs that I've shot over the years. And uh, it allows you to drag and drop them directly into Unreal Engine. But besides just giving you a backdrop, it does a lot more. So I've, I've made the, 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 the blueprint so that you can change literally anything and everything you want. So it has a directional light tied to the HDRI. So as you rotate your HDRI, the sun goes with it. Um, it has uh, all the post-processing effects. All that's in one menu. So you can, do, you can quickly add bloom. You can quickly add fog. You can change depth of field. You can add god rays. It's very, very flexible. Um, and you can even add your own HDRIs. So it's a, it's a really interesting tool. And if you get a chance, go check it out on the Epic Marketplace. All right, and let's play this video. So this is a video I'm still in the process of making. Um, but it's, it's sort of a music video tutorial. Uh, and it's a, it's a good way to sort of explain some of the things that are happening in virtual production. Uh, in an easy way. So if you see here, I'm live keying. I'm also running the software and while I'm filming all this. Um, but so I'm using, in this example, I'm using green screen. Here is what the background footage looks like if you don't have camera tracking. It just stays there. Um, and then I, what I do is I go in, I uh, connect our in-cam tracking system, and then you'll see that it snaps to the focal link. And now when I move, the footage moves naturally. It's stuck to the wall as if I'm there. And the other thing that's interesting about this is it also is tied to the zoom and the focus. So if you zoom in, it crops in. If you, it, you can also rack focus to the background or the foreground. And it's a very interesting workflow. And then in this next part of this video, um, I talk about the, I basically go over the color correction, the importance of color correction and lighting for, for these things. And this is one of the, again, this is one of the reasons that we use live effects so heavily because it's a really powerful tool for color correction. Um, and so you can see I, I changed the lighting and I changed the color and all that. 
And then in the, this next part, I show a very, a very poor man's car process uh, with green screen and 360 plates uh, in the background. Um, and then the idea for this video is the rest of this video is going to be completed on an LED volume with the crew and kind of done to that scale. So the video will start showing sort of like, yeah, you can do this in your garage with a green screen. You can do most of this stuff. You can get 90% there, sometimes 100% there. But with a crew and a stage and volumetric lighting and everything else, it can really come to, to come about. So more to come, and, and we'll, we'll get to that. I'll, I'll share that uh, when, I, when I do. OK, we can go ahead and go to the next one. So I couldn't do an actual demo here, so I've recorded the demo we're doing over at uh, B&H. And uh, I put it here just so we can, I can talk through some of the stuff we're doing there. If you get a chance to go by the B&H booth, I uh, highly recommend it. We can go over this stuff in, in, in real life. Um, the, the tracking system we're using over there is called InCam. And one of the things that's interesting about InCam is that you don't actually need markers. Uh, we do have markers set up at that booth. It's very flexible. If you like using markers, it is typically more uh, accurate. But if you were here, I, you could literally just point it up and you get really great tracking. It's, it's, not, I, it's one of those things, it's, it's the right tool for the job. So is it the best in the studio environment? Maybe not. But it's really great for me because I like to take it on location. We've used it for post VFX, so we don't even use, we're not even using Unreal Engine. We just bring it onto set, we record the tracking data, and then we can take that into uh, other programs to do the VFX. So uh, I'm going to talk about image-based lighting here in a little bit. And in this, this part of the clip, I'm dragging and dropping the, uh, uh, these are basically the Quasar Science lighting tubes that we've mapped out. And I can drag that in, and you'll see here um, on this fixture. I can change the size of it, change the, the width of it. And then what happens here is if you see these, these fixtures over here that are off, I'm going to drag them on so that you see the video. And now it's playing the video that's on the wall. And this lighting is, is really, really interesting because it, you'll see a little bit more here in a little bit why image-based lighting is, is so important. But uh, uh, let me see. But yeah, and I'll talk a little bit about how we're capturing plates. There's, there's a few different ways that we are capturing plates uh, that I think is kind of in a unique way. And also, the software we're using, the, the, the way we're doing it is, a, is, is a kind of a unique way of doing it. So we can shoot full 360 car plates. Um, and we have shot full 360 car plates. We have some that you can come check out uh, later if you want. Um, but we can also shoot with cinema cameras on wide angle lenses for the camera, for the picture that goes on the wall. And we can also shoot, and then we can shoot with 360 camera just for the lighting. So you get all the interactive lighting that goes beyond what the picture camera sees. You get all that reflections, especially if you're doing car process or something like that. You get all those reflections, and uh, but you don't sacrifice on the quality that goes onto the wall. In this example, I'm showing also HDRIs. So similar thing with if you have static lighting, if it's just daylight, there's just a sun. Um, instead of shooting on a 360 video, what we do is we shoot. Um, on a high quality, we shoot high quality HDRIs, and that gives you the full range, the unclipped sun. And so, in this video, I was kind of demonstrating that, you know, you can send an unclipped sun to the Quasar Science tubes, and these tubes are by default soft; they, they shouldn't be giving a hard light. Um, but if you put the unclipped sun in there, you get the contrast values that are correct, and you can see a, you can see a shadow directly on it. And I think in the next video, uh, you'll see it a little bit better. We can go ahead and skip to the next one, yeah. Oh, maybe, maybe it's later. That's OK. Um, so this is an example of uh, one of the ways that we're doing things as well. So this is, this is uh, an HDRI. This is just a JPEG of that HDRI. But it's a 360 photo. So we shoot a plate, 180 plate, with um, you know, this beautiful dunes. And again, you can, you can see that later. And, 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 but for the lighting, what we do is we capture the HDRI. And the other thing, interesting thing we do is we shoot it at the same plate at different times of day. So one of the favorite things people do in Unreal, uh, you control L, change the lighting. Oh, we want to shoot magic hour now. Oh, we want to shoot day. We want to shoot this. So if you go to the next slide, um, we do the same thing with, with our plates. So we can shoot daytime. We can shoot sunset. Uh, next slide. We can shoot dusk. And again, this is just a JPEG. but. All this information is here. It looks like it's blown out. But if you need the information that's here, you can actually just dial it down and get the information back. Next slide. And then even the night sky. So you even if you, if you need the dark sky, you have this, and that's great. These are also going to be added to the HDRI Plus pack for Unreal Engine. So those will be there. And um, so this is an example of 
how we lay, we can lay out some of these things. So this, these, these frames that are here are my reference. And what I'm doing, what you see here is on the left side of the screen, I'm showing a daytime scene. On the left side of the screen, I'm showing a nighttime screen. So you can imagine on the processor, they're seeing the daytime scene. And the lighting, though, is being sent, this whole bottom part is being sent to lighting. And you can see the HDRI there, how it's stretched out. And I have actually a different part of the HDRI just for, just for the, the part there. So, and you can notice that this is kind of green. So it's not affecting, the, the, how we're changing the color for the lighting is not affecting our picture camera. But we also need to be able to change the color and the quality of the light. Because in this case, um, uh, Frieder from Kinoflow helped me, <laughs> the founder of Kinoflow is helping me dial in lights, which is kind of cool for me. But uh, he was like, yeah, the, the skin's a little, little magenta. Can you add green to it? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, oh, you, you can? <laughs> he was like, how are you doing that? Um, and so this is sort of you know, taking a peek behind the curtain of how we are able to achieve that. And in this example, I have two different scenes. So if you're familiar with Ghost Frame, we're also a part of the Ghost Frame booth here. And this is actually how we're doing it. We're sending daytime and nighttime scene to the wall. And you're, the, to the naked eye, you're only seeing the daytime scene. But the cameras, this one will see daytime, that one will see nighttime. And the lighting is also unique because we're able, for the first time ever, we're able to do the same thing with lighting. The KinoFlow Mimic is fast enough that it can work with Ghost Frame, meaning you can light somebody in real time at frame rate, you can light somebody for a nighttime scene. This camera could see the nighttime scene in the background, and I could be lit for night. And this camera could see daytime scene, I could be lit for day, completely different lighting, and no bleed over. It's, it's really fascinating to see. It's, it's really something special. This is a video. So this is what I was talking about with the, the, the video that shows the image-based lighting a little bit better. So this is Tim King from Quasar Science. He is really one of the smartest people, nicest people that you'll meet. And this is his space in downtown LA. I was there two weeks ago. We set up his volume. This is what the mapping looks like for his, for his volume. And he's got this entire volume, like a dome of light that's being played back. And you'll notice the camera, the color's a little weird, but the, uh, you'll see the reflections and the shadows are extremely realistic. In this case, I'm showing that you can see the graffiti on the wall you know, from, from, the, from the Second Street Tunnel in LA. But when, uh, when the lights come back up, you'll notice that like, if you see on the ground, the direction of the shadows. So typically, this is done with a gag. You have a light coming on and off, on and off, on and off. But you don't get any direction. There's nothing that, that happens that moves across. It's hard to replicate that. But we do that very simply with um, 360 plates, with live effects, and with Quasar Science. We've developed a, a pipeline that works like that. And because of his, the way we've set this up, you, we can drop any 360 video into his volume, and the, the lighting is just perfect. It's, it's really, really incredible what we, we were able to achieve there. We, we can go ahead to the next one. <clears throat> I think this is also a video. Yep. So again, um, I when I met with uh, Frieder from, uh, if you haven't seen it yet, definitely check out the Kino Flow booth. I think they're also one of the sponsors. It looks like so. Kino Flow's one of their big announcements is the Mimic, and the Mimic is uh, is solving a big problem that we have in virtual production by adding RGBWW. So the, most LED panels are RGBW. They've added a cool white and a warm white to allow the full spectrum. Yes, yes, this is the Mimic right here. Sorry. This is the Mimic right here. It's not, it's not turned on right now, but this is the Mimic here. It's very lightweight, um, and it's a very, very impressive light. So these wall, most walls can only output you know, 1,000 nits or so. These panels can now put 10,000 nits, and they have colored white tunable white, which is really, really necessary. It's been something that all filmmakers have been asking for um, for about as long as, as you can think of. And in this example, if you saw, it went from a nighttime scene to a nighttime scene. And similar to in the lighting volume, you get, you see that stuff happening in real time. So um, it's just a different approach to image-based lighting. Um, okay. So this is an example of uh, ghost frame. So if you look at this image, this is shot in real time uh, at frame rate. So it's not frame remapping. It's not every other frame. It's not flickering in the room. 
you just see, the naked eye just sees this. And you'll notice on that side, the light is on and this light is off. But in this one, it's opposite. And this one, this light's off and that light's on and I'm being lit for nighttime. And the eye, your eye doesn't see it, but the cameras see it this way. It's, it's really something that is uh, unique and special and um, Ghost Frame and the Mimic make it possible. So then here I'm just talking about the examples that we have over at the B&H booth. We have uh, some plates that we shot here in Las Vegas on Tuesday. Uh, so you can come by and check out those being driven with image-based lighting. Um, we also have some 2.5D examples where we bring in photogrammetry directly into live effects. So no need, you don't have to bring in Unreal. You can actually just do video plates, bring in photogrammetry, and have a 3D scene. You can walk forward and back in that scene. This is another example of photogrammetry, and there's in the background, we have a 2D element, and in instead of a 360, we have a 2D video plate in the background. Um, and then, uh, and that's the end of my presentation. <laughs> Are there any questions? Hey, so I was wondering if you could elaborate a little bit more, because obviously Unreal Engine is really powerful. It has a lot of amazing features. You can do a lot of great things. But like, in what instances would something like Assimilate Live Effects be maybe the better choice for a particular production? Like, maybe you can give us some examples. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's a great question. The question, well, you heard the question. So, um, Unreal Engine, so Live Effects can use Unreal Engine. So, you can actually use Unreal Engine inside of Live Effects um, or in conjunction with. But, uh, but background plates, 360 plates uh, or 2D plates, um, have one main advantage, which is they are photo real. You don't have to worry about if they're photo real, they're not photo real. Now, that, that doesn't mean that there's not technical challenges with that. You got to make sure you're shooting at the right frame rate. You got to make sure the color science is correct and all that. Um, so that's definitely, uh, video is, is, is by far one of the things that Live Effects does really well. You can actually, he sh Matt's shooting on the Canon R5C, which is shooting 8K RAW. You can actually bring 8K RAW into Live Effects and use it as your background plate. And it'll play back in real time. You can change the new Bayer settings. You can change the color science. It's uh, underneath the hood. It's a really powerful color correction engine. So, so let's see. We got that. Okay. So when you're dealing with 2D or 2.5D, it's a much easier way for someone to stick their toes in the water, get up, make sure that you're feeling comfortable with virtual production overall or in camera VFX, and it, it's an easy path. Um, jumping in full speed with Unreal, which I'm a huge fan, as you can tell, um, is a lot more work. It, it is a lot more effort, um, and especially when you're trying to get to photorealistic levels. Uh, it, it absolutely gets there, but it, it's just a, a much bigger challenge. And, and car process really is the most obvious example of why you would want to use driving plates. And sometimes Unreal works great as well, but it's a... Yeah. I, like to, I like to call car plates um, uh, the gateway drug. Yeah. That is the gateway drug to onset virtual production. <laughs> It's, it's an easy place to start. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, actually, Sam Nicholson was just here, and he was talking about some of the places where he's he's shooting plates right now. Have you ever seen any of his rigs? Yeah. Oh yeah. They're they're outrageous. I love the one he did for um, uh, the 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 pirate movie. What was that pirate oh, show? Oh right. Uh, uh, our flag seas. means death. Yeah, yeah. And and he ran around the Caribbean with this like eight rig black magic yeah. setup and was. Uh, Stitching it all together was pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's done some stuff with KinoFlow as well. Yeah. It's pretty cool stuff. Yeah. All righty. Anybody else out there? Nope. One more. Let's say, did you get to catch the Tim Kang talk yesterday? Yes. 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 I was driving it. Oh. <laughs> I was driving it. And it's funny. I just posted on my LinkedIn. You guys will get a kick out of this. He put his slideshow through live effects. So every time his slide changed, I would, put, I would sample his face and I would put it on the ceiling. And I did the same when he got a, he had a slide of Paul Devevic, who's obviously a hero in this whole space. And so I like And he was sitting in the audience in the front seat, which was funny. I like sampled his <laughs> face and like put it up on the ceiling. It's I it's it, I just posted to my LinkedIn right before this talk. It's hilarious. Okay. And I put IBL P PPT, image based lighting for PowerPoint. <laughs> uh, pretty amazing. Awesome. Well thank you so much, yeah. Alex. Have a great day.